Hello, hi, um, I'm Colin Jose, nice to meet you, all of you. And uh, just want to say a few things, uh, because last time I uploaded a video about the teachings and about the Dharma practice, it was uh, almost last year, and after a while I was in Taiwan, and, and uh, you know, I was in Taiwan and India, you know, so I was quite busy, and I could not upload any kind of a uh, videos of teachings or sharing about Dharma practice. You know, I think, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about the uh, teacher and student relation uh, and the connection, how it should be and how it has to be, you know, like, I think that's really important to understand because uh, nowadays in 21st century, uh, you know, like, the problem is there's a lot of misunderstanding and confusion about uh, the difference between the teacher and student relation, you know, like, most people, some people think that being so close to the teacher can really, really, really uh, help you uh, to rapidly increase the understanding about the Dharma practice and we think that all oh, the more we close closer to the teacher, the more we can understand about Dharma practice, the more we can receive the teachings about Dharma practice, the more we will be uh, helpful to all the sentient beings. Well, that's one belief. And the other belief is that, you know, we, you know, the more we read about lots of Dharma teachings and practice and we think that that can actually help us to understand the Dharma and understand the Dharma practice. That's one perspective. Another one is that, you know, just seeing the teacher whenever you like, you know, when you find the time, seeing your teacher when you have time and then of course after after receiving the teachings in the apartment you we always kind of believe that Okay, so now I receive blessing, I receive empowerment, so I'm fine for maybe for a few months, so maybe next time, you know, I'll just see a great teacher. You know, that you have, you know, you're lacking uh, attention, uh, you're lacking in the desire to do the Dharma practice. You're just focusing more into, uh, 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 into the blessing and empowerment and blessing and empowerment. I'm not saying that it is not really helpful. Of course it is really helpful, but uh, out of all these three, I think it's important to balance. Uh, you know, first of all, you know, in the 21st century, it's, it's uh, really difficult to find the right teacher. And nowadays, also, that we focus very, very, very much into the image of what kind of a right teacher should be. You know, that oh, this is how the teacher should be. You know, we have this this uh, fantasy about the, how the teacher should be. Like example, oh, maybe the teacher should be exactly like a Buddha. Absolutely no problem, no mistake, no misunderstanding. Absolutely who can see the past and the future and the present. And we have that kind of idea also. And then some people, we have this idea about, oh, since we are Vajrayana practitioner, he should be something like a great yogi master, you know, who can just fly over the sky and then who talk, who can show the miracle and magical things. And we tend to find that kind of teacher. And I think, you know, you have to find a balance, you know, whatever happened in the history of Buddhism and all the great teachers is absolutely true, and of course I have a great devotion to all the great teachers with the great, I have different stories. I, you know, but, you know, at the end, is you, know, you should not have a pressure about needing, you know, like, that I need to have a teacher. Of course, that is good, you know, that always telling yourself that you need to have a teacher. But also the problem is that nowadays everybody is exaggerating that, oh yeah, if you want to practice Dharma, you need to have the one root guru and one root guru, you have to find root guru, root guru, root guru. And we give so much pressure on ourselves to find the right guru. And, you know, sometimes we end up in the wrong place. You know, because not, you know, in the Buddhism, you know, what we think, the journey in the Dharma and path of enlightenment, what we imagine is something really miracle and magical and beautiful that, you know, you take a refuge, you take a bodhicitta vow, and then after a while, you know, you will be just enlightened, and then you will benefit all of the sentient being with no obstacle, and then of course you will benefit all the Dharma teachings and gradually, step by step, with no confusion. Well, that is your hope, that is your fantasy, that is not the reality. In reality, we should not give a pressure on ourselves to have a teacher in the first place. In the first place, I think most important is to study about the philosophy, about the Buddhism Dharma teaching. Not following the teacher right away. You know, right now, you know, we have so many different books. 
you know, so many great teachings from the great teachers. And I'm sure that you don't have to only focus on one, one path, you know, you can find the different teachings from great, great different teachers, and then always read this kind of a books, and you always get a lot of, lot of information. But, you know, reading and studying only will not help your uh, stability or the foundation in your mind. To gain the stability and to bring foundation in your mind, we must also analyze our state of mind through meditation practice. So, the first beginning, you know, like, you know, of course, to learn and to have some skills, the way to do meditation practice, of course, we need a Dharma instructor. So, you know, you should feel free to meet and talk to the Dharma instructor. It can be a Lama, it can be a Rinpoche, it can be a, a great practitioner. You know, uh, a great practitioner does not need to have a big name, you know. It's the quality is what you need. Big name can be made by publicity, by so many different purposes, by so many uh, different kind of people. Just because some teachers are famous does not mean they are uh, right to their quality. It does not mean that they can actually help you, you know. So what you need is something that you can talk to, someone that you can talk to, someone that you can see regularly, someone that you can actually bring some changes into your daily life. Uh, through meditation practice, through Shinenakton practice. And I think starting with something really basic, uh, you know, finding a Dharma instructor in the beginning, that's important. I wouldn't say a Rul Guru right away. I would, I'm not, I would not suggest Rinpoche or Rul Guru right away. I would, I would suggest you to find a Dharma instructor. It can be starting from Rinpoche, high-ranking, realized great bodhisattva, to the person who are also advanced compared to you, about the Dharma practice. So you can always start something really simple, something basic. And I think mm, that is important. And uh, you know, many of us, we always push ourselves to have a guru, guru, guru. You know, being married, you know, or being so close to a teacher does not make you an enlightened being. And you know, actually it's much more worse because what you need is the Dharma, what you need is the Dharma, not the person. But since the person that uh, was giving you the Dharma teaching, without any attachment, we have to see example within our great teacher's uh, Dharma activity. We have to see example, we have to see, find the inspiration step by step, gradually, along with our own experience. And then once we find the inspiration and example, that should be adapted to yourself, and with that, we should liberate uh, from our own suffering, from our own illusion. So, I think that is important, you know, because finding a teacher does not mean that you have to be dependent. Finding a teacher means you are, through the example and through the inspiration of your great teacher, without being attached to your teacher, but at the same time receiving all the teachings, and you should be liberated by the instructions, by the Dharma teaching. But that should not be done in a very overconfident way from your side. That has to be analyzed, check your mind. You know, because nowadays we focus very much into how many times we actually practice, how many times we receive empowerment, how long I've been chanting, how many times mantra I've been accumulating. Uh, accumulating. That's not even close to the understanding or the purpose of Dharma practice. The real purpose of the Dharma practice is to decrease your distraction. Not how many times you can do chanting, not how many times you can do visualization, not how many things that you can talk about. You know, Dharma is really beautiful to talk about it because it's, it is all truth. But if you live in the illusion of all the beautiful words, by not adapting to yourself, by not realizing you know, the main point and essence of Dharma teachings, then of course, again, you will live in illusion. You will come out from the suffering and our life illusion to the Dharma illusion, believing all this kind of beautiful words and also getting stuck into that without adapting into yourself. That small problem can be start with the self-attachment, with the with the with the ego, ego right, really? and zen right, self attachment. So uh, all this small 
uh, you know, all this big misunderstanding can caused by something really, 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 something really simple. Simple, it will start with yourself. It doesn't start with the great teacher and because of them I didn't, con you know, I didn't improve my Dharma practice. Because of my previous life, good karma, bad karma, and because of that I could not understand Dharma. Because of the 21st century, because we have to stop blaming on the 21st century or the karma or to the teacher or to yourself. Stop blaming. Most important is that you have to analyze that where is actually blocking from, from improving. Like, Chanting a mantra. The main purpose of the chanting a mantra is to find a clarity in your mind with the less distraction. With the body, we do meditation practice. With mind, we focus on the clarity. It can be visualization from deity to something really as simple as light. And then from our speech, uh, you know, we are we are chanting mantra. So when you are, uh, you know when your body, speech and mind is all in natural state and then naturally there will be there will be peace there will be peacefulness, there will be wisdom, there will be joy, there will be passion, naturally, step by step but all this uh, big misunderstanding about the Dharma practice the, all the cause of all the misunderstanding of suffering is your ego because, you know, when we have an ego we have all this pride, unnecessary because you know, having a pride for the moment is not a problem. Having a jealousy for the moment is not a problem. I'm not saying that as a human being we should not have jealousy or attachment uh, or ego. You know, having having like example, I will tell you, of right now I'm the greatest Rinpoche in this whole world. Okay, so at this moment I have a pride. Just telling myself that I'm the greatest Rinpoche uh, in this whole entire history. But did it really cause me to, you know, bring all the suffering on myself? No, it did not. Because, you know, just having it for the moment is, is, a, is a natural state of mind. It, it is okay to have a moment or a glimpse of a, a anger uh, or a jealousy or a pride. It is okay. But to be aware of your own state of mind from your own reflection, and I think that is very important for all of us. Because we, whenever we have this anger and jealousy and ego, we just tend to follow that without analyzing it. We just tend to follow without being aware of our own action. You know, so that is the cause of problem. So, you know, all this, why we have this jealousy? You know, jealousy is all about that when you see other people being happy, being successful, being achieved on something, you are actually not rejoicing them you are unhappy for them. But that unhappiness to others did not start with other people. It actually started with yourself. But did it start with a lot of joy? No, it did not. It did, uh, you know, it did start with the lack of wisdom. Lack of wisdom starts from ego. You know, when we have too much ego and too much pride on ourselves, and then naturally all this negative behavior, uh, you know, will uh, increase and then it will definitely make very complicated in our life. It can be complicated in our relationship, marriage, dharma practice, even if you are living alone, you know, all this uh, can cause a lot of problems. In natural, in, in our world, there is already a lot of suffering, but you don't have to make it worse to yourself. Dharma practice, the main purpose of the dharma practice is to bring uh, liberation, uh, to liberate uh, from lack of wisdom to yourself and to show that example to others. By doing that you're already doing that, you're following you're already following the footstep of Bodhicitta. You know, Bodhicitta does not mean that you have to be exactly like the Buddha and Bodhisattva, what we read in history. Always thinking about others, caring about others, and not being jealous of other people and being kind and respectful is already the path of Bodhicitta. And then also coming back to the point so, all this ego starts from lack of wisdom. You know, all the self-attachment, uh, pride starts from lack of wisdom. So, you know, we cannot, so we realize all this cause of suffering, right? But we cannot have this uh, choice, you know, we cannot have this choice of saying that, okay, I understood the cause of suffering. 
So I don't want this, I want Dharma, so I can purify myself, I can be better. We all hope that, we all want that. But it doesn't work that way. You know, as I said, you need to find the Dharma instructor, starting with something simple, start something to focus on yourself, uh, with uh, recognizing a distraction. And then the more you recognize the distraction and decrease that step by step, the more you will have an power in your mind. The more you will have a power in your mind, there's always a calm state in your mind. When there's a calm state of in your mind, there's always a wisdom, there's always a solution. Without being angry, without being jealous, because as a human being, we always tend to think that this is very natural. You know, we take it very natural to be angry, we take it very naturally to have a jealousy, we we take it very natural to be happy. You know, we think all that as a part of our human nature and it is okay to feel something like this time to time. But as a human being, you know, if you focus on the spiritual Dharma practice, there's so many things that you can discover by bringing, by doing the actual Dharma practice under the right instruction. So, I think it's important for all of us uh, to focus under the right instruction. How can you find the right instruction? Once you start to realize that you're actually decreasing your distraction when you're doing Dharma practice, when you're doing meditation, and you're actually finding more calm and clarity in your state of mind, that is when you have to recognize, and which you will recognize naturally, that, that you are receiving the right instruction. So I think it's important to all of, all of us to uh, follow all the Dharma instruction step by step. I think that is necessary because nowadays, you know, like uh, uh, you know, uh, like uh, first Chandra Gondu Gopatai said in the Nama calling from Pra, he said, you know, first we never find a grip within our Dharma practice, and the second, you know, we talk as if as if that we are already enlightened for the last thousand years, and you don't even you, you you just don't harm yourself. You also make other people confused. So, so that's why it's important for all of us. To be humble, to be down to earth, is always a great partner for our, uh, as a human being or as a Dharma practitioner. But I think it's important to be understood precisely, you know, because Dharma practice cannot be modern, you know, as our state. Because nowadays we talk so many things about this modern, that modern teacher, this modern teacher, this modern teacher. Even people tell me, Kalam Ji, you are very modern. But you are not actually being modern, you know, you're just simply talking about Dharma practice and, you know, when you see the differences between the tradition and culture and the Dharma itself, to bring the Dharma into your daily life is so easy, it's so simple. But, when we follow what other people follow, actually it's not helping you, it's just wasting your time. You think that you're going in the right direction, but you're wasting your time. That's why, you know, Nowadays, everybody is practicing the Dharma like in a huge army. You know, general says, go in the right direction, we go in the right direction, without even thinking or realizing or being practical. And then when someone says, go to the left, everybody goes to the left. And that's not how Buddhism actually started. You know, if you look at the teachings about the Buddha himself, he didn't sit up in the throne all the time talking about Bodhicitta. You know, sometimes people are going through a struggle between the landlord, farm with the court, they are finding for a solution and Buddha give advice to them, supported them. And when there's some individual who are going through a, a tough time with their life and trying to find a second choice, Buddha was there, always trying to support them. Buddha did not say life is ugly. You know, Buddha did not say suffering is uh, what we have, so we, for that we all have to do Dharma practice. Buddha did not say that. You know, Buddha simply said that I give you a solution and possibility to understand more about yourself, to bring more stability, and it is up to you then whether you want to follow or not. So we have our responsibility to follow a right path, uh, step by step. Of course, as a practitioner, we will fall into confusion, we will fall into obstacle, and that is normal. You know, that is normal. So I think it's important to keep on. Uh, Encouraging yourself step by step and always be aware of your own ego and always be aware of your own pride. You cannot practice the Dharma and decrease all that at once. 
We don't want suffering. Yes, we understand that. We want all the positive impact in our spiritual understanding. Yes, I accept that. But, you know, we all need to do retreat every once in a while. Of course, receiving a Dharma teaching sounds really pleasant for our ear, just like the way we listen to the music and the lyrics itself. But if you have never experienced by yourself, you will never find the value and you will never find the necessary to, necessary to bring the teachings into your life. So, to understand about the Dharma practice into a very practical level and also uh, being realistic and also to receive teachings and you yourself uh, practicing Dharma is important. Uh, every once in a while and most importantly during the retreat. Of course, when we talk about retreat, we always think that Oh, I have to go to the holy place or I have to go up in the mountain. But the retreat is where you find yourself with the less distraction. And a retreat does not need a location. But in the beginning we have to choose with the location, we have to choose with the environment. 